Hi everybody, yes it's me and I'm back with a proper video and I apologise, you know, again profusely, it's been a tough year and I have for a long time lost my mojo, that's why it's been a struggle to, you know, for me to get content out. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details, I don't want this channel to turn into, I don't want to become the new Boogie 29888, obviously with one sixth of the biomass, so instead I'm just going to crack on uh, with, you know, with the video and let's get back to having some fun, shall we? Now, one of the sort of styles of videos that I'm most uh, commonly known for is going into the news and do it, looking at different news stories and talking about stuff in the news. You know, I know, highly original, I know, uh, but fuck you, I've been, it's all I've got. Uh, and now, you know, normally I, I prefer to do videos where I look at news stories and go on deep dives in the news. But it's been such a while since I did any uh, other, any proper videos that, uh, you know, I wanted to try and get, uh, you know, as big, as many sort of stories in as I could. But it's very difficult to do that when you don't have as much time. Uh, to get it in. So I thought, well, rather than doing a deep dive into the news, what if I did the opposite of a deep dive? What if, just like a shallow, you know, just a shallow paddle, right? If I, you know, what if I did that instead? Now, you might be familiar with this, and if you're not, I'm about to familiarise you with it. Uh, over the course of the last 10 years, there have been many different uh, studies and, uh, you know, and re there's been lots of research by many different groups and organisations uh, into this phenomenon where people, the majority of people who, you know, share articles on, on social media, on their Facebooks or their Twitter, um, you know, it, it, it turns out the majority of people, anywhere between, you know, 55 to 70% don't actually read the article that they're posting. They, they, they never actually read it, they just share it without, re without reading it because they can't be bothered. And they think, you know, for some bizarre reason, that they can trust the, you know, the headline and the picture and you know, the image that, you know, the, to the link to, to being enough for, to, to, to say what it is. So I thought, what if instead of doing a deep dive into the news, what if I just read the news the way the majority of people out there read the news, i.e. not reading it at all. So that's what I'm going to do in this video, ladies and gentlemen. This video is me showing you how not to read the news. Now, before I get onto the actual not reading of the news, I thought I would show you a good example as to why you should really read the articles rather than just going with the headlines. Because obviously, if you know that people are not going to, the majority of people are not going to be reading the story, then it can give you an excuse to be very manipulative. Now, here's an example of how that happens. Uh, recently, there's been a story, there's been many stories uh, regarding the, uh, the fact that the government have been choosing to uh, divert any asylum seekers or refugees who are coming to this country uh, to Rwanda. Um, and anyone that, you know, to me sounds quite terrifying, particularly for anyone who's ever used a replacement bus service on British Rail. Uh, but the Daily Express, uh, who um, who have always, you know, had it, had an agenda that is you know beyond blatant, uh, thought they would try and spin this uh, and uh, try and accuse, try and use it to attack uh, Labour by going with this headline: Labour embarrassing hypocrisy as uh, as plan to send asylum seekers to Africa unveiled. Uh, now. Obviously, that would be that would be, that would be terrible if uh, that would be incredible hypocrisy if it turned out that Labour uh, were planning it had within their manifesto a plan uh, to actually d divert asylum seekers to Africa the same way that the Tories were. Actually, when you look into it, you realise that this was a plan that was uh, discussed and considered by Tony Blair when he was leader of the party in two thousand and four. 18 years ago. In fact, not only that, more importantly, even though the plan, it was a plan that was uh, discussed and was openly uh, looked into, it was one that was not ultimately implemented. They didn't go through with it. And you can see how it would be kind of ridiculous to accuse Keir Starmer and the modern day Labour Party of being hypocrites for something that a completely different le Labour leader did 18 years ago when none of the people involved in the Labour Party now were probably even members. Right? So that's an example of why you should really 
read the articles because if you didn't you would probably just read that see that headline and then assume that Keir Starmer and the Labour Party are being hypocrites because they were going to do it anyway when in fact that's not the case but that's why you should read the article now let's just carry on as if we didn't Enfield Southgate Conservatives Chair resigns over Nazi photo. See, this is how bad the Tories are. Even the fucking chairs are resigning. Even the furniture is racist. But the great thing about the Tories is even when they don't dress up as Nazis, it, you know, even when they try and look normal, look at this fucker. Look at him. It, I mean, it's like, it's, 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 it's like he's a Donald Trump cosplayer, right? Believe it or not, that is not even a... That's not, that's not, that is a man who is from the same species as you and me. Right? Nottingham Chief hits out at Tory MP over drinking co I mean, who was this guy? How did this guy fucking win an MP, become an MP? Who was he running against? Was the man covered in children's blood? Germany kidnap plot. Gang plans to overthrow democracy. What, they were going to kidnap democracy? Behind the scenes at Zelensky's modern age. What do you mean behind the scenes? It's not, it's not a sitcom. I don't need the behind the. I don't need the outtakes. Is there a blooper reel as well from all the videos he's made? Steven Seagal's pro-Putin gushing could be easier to ignore, so why don't me? So why did you write an article about it? By writing an article about it, claiming we should ignore it, you are by definition not ignoring it. Also, th there's a picture of Steven Seagal holding two massive melons right in front of him, you know, presumably to cover the fact that he's got huge tits anyway. Now this one's just confusing. Moby, right, by the way, Moby's a prick anyway, but I have been accidentally celibate for six years. So, so he's an Axel, is he? What do you mean accidentally celibate? How do you, how are you, how are you celibate by accident, right? right? What you meant to, you were meant to fuck people, but you just forgot, or you know, or you ended up having sex with no, the wrong thing. You ended up fucking the pillowcase instead. What do you mean? You? Were, how can you be accidentally? How can you ac How can you not fuck someone for six years by accident? Greece actor Eddie Deason charged after. I'm sorry. The fact that this. I'm just. I don't. Whatever crime he's done, I don't care. He. The fact that he is not in this day and age thought to boost his career by changing his last name to these nuts is just makes me hate him on site. Al Pacino, 81, began dating Noor Al Fala, 28, during the pandemic. What a bloke. Right? I don't know what this article is supposed to imply, or, you know, I don't know what during the pandemic is relevant. I think, obviously, the, the, the obvious thing would be the age gap, but, and, and, you know, and I don't know whether they're doing it to sort of go, Al Pacino, you know, what a geezer, or, you know, as if this is in some way, you know, I, I can't, I can't work it out, and honestly, I don't fucking care, you know, I, it, it's none of my business, but this is just indicative of the, you know, this is indicative of, like, the hypocrisy of the Daily Mail when it comes to the way they, uh, they portray men and women. As demonstrated by this story, Billie Eilish looks every inch the rock chick in a gorilla's t-shirt and baseball hat. So there you go. If you want to look like a rock chick, you need a T-shirt, a you know, which has the has a band that's not a rock band on it, and and a baseball cap. It's certainly not an excuse just to show a picture of Billie Eilish, uh, and uh, you know, as she's grown up, isn't she? And 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 just just there just for the sake of it, right? So you know, Al Pacino, dirty old man. Oh look, here's a tw here's a twenty here's a twenty year old. Rock you know, pop star in a in a in a in a t-shirt and you know wearing clothes. You know, but as demonstrated by this story, you don't need to really do much. You know, to be if you're an attractive young woman, you don't need to do much to get a story written in the Daily Mail, as we see here. Lauren Guja narrowly avoids walking into puddle. Right? That's not so much clickbait as the literal story. Right? That's what you talk about slow news days. And as this one demonstrates, you know, normally, you know, the Daily Mail just can't help but show how immature and, you know, the arrested development they have when it comes to dealing uh, with the female anatomy. Uni student reveals why she got Grace Tame's side eye tattooed on bum. 
Not on her bum. Not on back. You could have put backside, rear end, buttocks. No, bum in all caps. But <laughs> child is accused of molesting pregnant woman near shopping centre. I- I'm not even touching that one. You know what? I don't. I, I got. I. I don't know what angle to take on this. Um. Yeah. I. Th- I mean what. what if I, whatever I say, it will be wrong, right? And I'll get in trouble. Nicholas Cage selects three favourite films from his own career. Well, that's, I mean, it, it, the, the man is always taking on difficult, uh, challenging roles, but this has got to be the most challenging. I mean, the, you know, when we all know the best Nicholas Cage film is all of them tied first, right? The end. Dot com. Gilbert Gottfried works on a commercial just weeks before his death. Why is that a story? Man still alive, man who recently died, did work, was working, before he was dead. That's not, if he was working on it weeks after he fucking died, or unless he was selling a product that was literally advertised as, you know, this product will guarantee you not to die in a couple of weeks, then that would be a st- this is not a story. You know, you know things are losing. You, know, you know people are losing their edge when you see headlines like this. Corey Taylor stops Slipknot show mid song to direct medics to injured fan, right? As opposed to the old days when Corey Taylor would have said jump on the bus and everyone would have just crushed him to death. As uh, you know, as we always see. You know that is that that story. Interestingly, is similarly backed up by this story. Peter Andre recalls the time Liam Gallagher apologised for calling him a cunt. Yeah. What he actually meant was, you know, what he actually meant to say was stupid cunt. You know, Liam, Liam probably had his fingers crossed behind his back the whole time. One of the people who is lamenting it is Gene Simmons. I stand by my words. Rock is dead and the fans killed it. Now, this is not, this is something I'm seeing a lot more. and It's just a sign. First of all, let's just get this out of the way. Kiss, I don't care you know, whether you're a fan of Kiss, fuck Kiss, right? They're just juggalos for boomers. That's all they fucking are. And apart from, you know, apart from like two songs, one of which I only know about because it was in the, it it, it was in the soundtrack to Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, right? We could, you know, this, if Kiss had never existed, rock and roll would be fine, right? But you see this a lot along with, this this goes along with this whole obsession with cancel culture. Another one that came along recently was Catherine Tate, claims cancel culture is waging war on comedy and calls for common sense to prevail. Catherine Tate, who hasn't done a joke, who is famous for doing what? Playing, playing a slightly dim-witted teenager, you know, which, you know, and fair play to her, you know, it was only a good couple of years after Matt Lucas had already done the same thing with Vicky Pollard, right? But you see this well, along with, and you see Bill Maher is another one here. This is actually, this is actually for a screenshot from uh, an email sent out by uh, by Gab, you know, d- defending Bill Maher, talking about you know cancel culture, and it's always I'm sick of these fuckers. I'm sick of these fuckers. These 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 you no know, old you know these old has beens or not even has beens. They're just people who have you know who have just you know been successful and now and uh, the game has passed them by, right? And now they want to blame the fans. They want to blame. It's, it's not. Excuse me. It is not my fault. You know, to take Gene Simmons, the fans killed rock music. I don't, I didn't fucking, excuse me, I'm not making rock music, right? If an industry, if you have an industry, and the people within that industry produce the product that makes that industry successful, if that industry dies, it is not the fault of the people, of the general public and the consumers, that it died, right? If you had, if you had a, if you had a company, if, if a, if a company makes... You know, let's say a company makes cheeseburgers and people suddenly decide to stop eating cheeseburgers because they don't like cheeseburgers anymore or they want to eat something different from cheeseburgers and the cheeseburgers die. It's not their fault. It's your fault. It's your fault for not making a product good enough. It's the same way comedians like Catherine Tate and Bill Maher, who are just, you know, old fucking ha- who are now just at a point where they're just whinging twats, right? Make a fucking joke. We are not a bl- n- Nobody owes you a fucking, 
Nobody owes you a la laughter. You, we do not owe you a career. It's not our fault that people don't find what you do funny anymore. Maybe if you told a fucking joke once in a while. And you know what? It's fine, you know? That's generally the way things tend to go. People, you know, people who are, you know, c you know people who, are, when they're young and they're starting out and they've got energy and they, 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 you know, they've got some edge to them, People go to it, and as you get older, more successful, more comfortable, you lose that fucking edge. And now, you'll have to forgive me for cheating a bit here. This wasn't a news headline. This was one, this was, you know, this was uh, an, an, a, a sort of a newsletter email that Gab sent out. And yes, I subscribed to Gab's email, uh, newsletter. It's hilarious. And uh, this is an example why, because, you know, I, I kind of admire just the sort of, delusional self-confidence because as we all know Elon Musk you know is, bu is, bu is buying Twitter or has got, he bought Twitter I don't know what but you know in a, in, a, in, a, in a hilarious attempt to try and you know sort of get some I don't know if, I don't know if they, they, they knew this would they thought they believed this would happen Gab actually sent out an open open offer to sit down and discuss negotiations with Elon Musk to buy Gab uh, which he could probably do with the change that he could find behind his fucking sofa. Uh, I reckon I could probably do it and still have enough money for the bus fare home. In other news, a captured partisan found guilty of treason was led out into the woods at gunpoint where he was made to dig his own grave and then he was shocked when the soldiers from the opposing forces shot him in the head. Jake Paul explains why he beat the fuck out of base, base basketball mascot. Well, presumably it's because that basketball mascot fits the criteria of everyone else that you know, Jake Paul has had a boxing match with, in that they've got no boxing experience whatsoever. Right? Or maybe the boxing mascot w happened to be holding a mirror while he was walking past him. And... In an attempt to, again, you know, go off, try and get some clout by going after people who are real fighters, Jake Paul decided to attack a guy called Michael, Michael Bispin, who is a retired UFC fighter, because Michael Bispin lost his eye as a result of, you know, of his, of his time in the, in the octagon, and Jake Paul decided to make fun of Michael Bispin's glass eye. And I'm sorry, but Jake Paul, have you seen what you look like? Right? You know that thing where you stand in front of a mirror and you do that sort of thing? Like, he looks like a geezer who's just too far in, right? He looks like, I reckon if, if Jake Paul gets hit in the face enough by professional boxers, by the time he retires, he might look fucking human. And just to show that the British tabloids really do take sport, you know, you know, women's sport very seriously, the, the Daily Star giving us this is glamorous girls land brutal hits in slap fighting championships, then hug it out. Yeah, whoa, hey, whoa, hey, whoa, hey, whoa. It's pathetic, isn't it? Coca-Cola Enterprises boss admits taking £1.5 million in bribes. Now, I know nothing about this story, but I just love the photo they've used, because it's like, look at that guy's face. He's like, he's going, mm. oh, oh, yes, mm. silly old naughty me. Yes, I'm sorry. I couldn't, you know me. Now, I'm going to have to admit to cheating a little bit here, folks, because I saw this headline, Anchors Away, I live on a cruise ship for free, and my life of luxury costs me less than £70 a week. And I was immediately thought, this is going to be that, that, that meme with, with, from The Simpsons, where everyone goes, say the line, Bart. And so I clicked onto the story, and would you believe it, of course... And that's because she's a WOB, or a wife on board, and lives half a year on a cruise ship alongside her staff chief engineer hu husband. Yay! I've worked for Google, Nike and Adidas, but now I'm back in Dundee to help local businesses. Look at the smug look on it. Hey, hey, you read this story? Yeah, it's about some mush who's doing really well for himself. Well, it's warmed the cockles of my fucking heart. Punch bowl in. Owners of demolished pub demolished listed pub told to rebuild I'm sure I could what woman jailed in court after going on two day stealing spree in, du in Dunfermline Primark yeah she must have got away with at least four quids worth of fucking goods there body of dog found at West Fife Golf Club Oh, I hope the oh god! I hope the ball landed right on it. 
and they had to play it where it lays. Manchester has been named the best city in the UK for bees. Well, that's obvious, isn't it, why that is. It's because the Mancunian accent is the closest thing that humans have to, you know, to, that sounds like bees, isn't it? A strictly no men allowed club night is coming to Manchester. Yeah! Fucking hypocrites. How dare you do it in a town as well? And you do it in a town, and you do it in Manchester, of all places. This is dictatorship. Drivers savage 2030 petrol and diesel car ban plans. N quote nonsense. Yeah, right. The, the, look. You don't have to drive a pet. This is this is the government's cat. First of all, it's it's a ban on the sale and manufacture or the selling of new cars that are diesel or petrol cars after 2030. Right, uh, which you can still drive the miserable old fucking polluting banger that you've got now. But even if you do, you don't have to drive a fucking. You know, we're, we're, you, know you might as well be having, you know, getting outraged about the fact you can't ride a horse and cart on the motorway anymore. Right, stop being so deliberately contrarian, and it's not a dictatorship. Right, and it's aided. This is, and I guarantee you, this is what the Express do all the time. They are simply quote all those quotes come from fucking miserable old twats in their fucking comment sections. Drink driving e scooter rider told police, "Yeah, I'm steaming. Fantastic. That guy's a see now. That guy's a fucking hero." Bristol's first disability-led brewery breaking boundaries. For, don't do a joke about being legless. Don't do a joke about being legless. Oh fuck, did I say that on camera? University pays $400,000 to professor who didn't use students' preferred pronouns. Now I happen to know a bit about this story already. So I'm kind of, I knew it before, I didn't click on it. This geezer is some Christian bloke who refused to refer to a transgender student by their preferred pronouns. They asked them if he could do that. And, and he refused to, claiming that his, it would be against his religious, his, his deeply held religious views. Because we all remember the quote in the Bible about there only being two genders. And when the student complained, right, this guy turned around and said, OK, I will do it, but only if, like, but, you know, but as long as I can sign a contract that states that I'm only doing it, you know, uh, you know under, uh, you know, because I because I fucking have to, right? But it, it's not because. But I don't actually believe it, right? What do you? And, and I'm just like, sorry, hold on. It's either against your religious values or it's not. It can't be against your religious values, you know. I, but you're willing to sign a contract that states otherwise. That you can't do that, okay? It's either either fucking, you know, stick to your guns or don't. Don't be such a fucking, you know, because now you've just shown that you're, you know, it's nothing to do with religious values at all. It's just your plain bigotry, you know, because you are willing to compromise. And I don't think God would appreciate that. Midwives told not to say vagina to avoid upsetting... Th OK, again, I know about this one already, because this has been, this has been in the papers before, and it's a different, a, bit of a different issue. Right, that is horseshit. Midwives told... No one's been told not to say anything. Basically, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of hospitals who have... Uh, they basically, they give the, they give the uh, patients... They give, they give uh, patients a form to fill out, and the form, I think I'll put a copy of it up there. The form has basically got a list of things, uh, of, 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 uh, you know, sort of uh, gendered, you know, medical terms, you know, that, that they use. And if the, if the, you know, patient or the, you know, would prefer that they use a different, you know, you, you say, so, use something else, or use a different term, you know, that would make them feel better, uh, and that would make them feel more comfortable, then they can do that, and they can write it down. But, you know, they can just as easily put... No one's being told not to say vagina. No one's being... You're not going to get it fired because you use the word fucking vagina. It's just, if it's, it's just a way of doing it to make it a little bit less, you know, without having to sort of, you know, to make it a bit more easy and less awkward in dealing with the whole issue. It's, you know, it's actually quite, it's quite, you know, it's a very reasonable, sensible way to deal with it, right? It's no one's being banned from saying anything. Did a fire kill black and Mexican families? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, God. No. No. Seattle doesn't refuse to host poop from the sidewalks because it's racially insensitive. 
Oh god, I'm going to have a heart attack! Dolphin washed ashore in Texas dies after beachgoers tried to ride it. Right, they could just... I don't need to click on that. If, it, if there is an article, it should just literally say fucking Texas. Trailer containing cattle overturns on A92. Jesus Christ, some, we're taking cow tipping to a new extreme, aren't we? In other tipping stuff over news... Really disappointed. Mystery after public flower display destroyed. It's not a mystery, is it? It's not a mystery. People knocked it over while they were drunk. Lagoon closed at Basingstoke Aquadome due to unforeseen circumstances. Translation, someone died. Aldi shoppers demand tough fines for drivers after mum's photo go Karen it winds up other Karens and gets loads of Karens to go on a massive Karening and demands to see the manager. It's a fucking bike parked in a what do you want him to do? What do you want him to do? Just fucking carry his bike into the fucking shop with him? Headlines like this are the reason I love local news story. Local news has the be it's it manages to make the, the, take the most mundane and innocuous and, and irrelevant fucking topics and incidents and make them sound even more fucking boring. I mean, you're an uninsured driver fined after collision caused by pulling in front of oncoming... Tra it's hardly fast and furious, is it? Residents warned as tons of waste paper catches fire in Nottingham. Presumably all in the same place. It wasn't just spontaneously combusting. So also, what are you warning the residents for? Can't they tell? Apparently they can't, because in another story, and I don't know if these are related, people told to avoid area over huge college fire. Is that where the waste paper was? Well, I don't know, but if, if, if you think this might sound like, you know, not sound like a big deal, let me tell you, this is, here's some video footage of the actual, you know, the place catching fire. So there you go, before you take the piss. I don't know about you folks, but for a while I've been, I've long stated that, you know, that uh, list videos need to die out because they're running out of ideas. And uh, if, if this doesn't prove that, I don't know what does. Top 10 busiest GP service surgeries in Nottinghamshire. You know, because they're treating people who keep walking into fires, apparently. South Yorkshire Police reveal list of ridiculous reasons for calls to 999 operators. Right. The most ridiculous one being that they expected the police to actually turn up and then for the crime to be solved. Illegal rave finally dispersed after 21 hours! What did they do? Send one cop? I don't even think the police turned up because it would say so in the headline. I reckon it just naturally fucking just naturally ended. 21 hours? What women think of drive to make city safer after spiking reports? Well... Is that necessary? Do we really need to ask them? Excuse me, madam, let me just ask you. There's been, there have been some initiatives put forward by the city and the council uh, in order to try and make it safer for you to go out, and go out of an evening and make it less likely that you're going to get raped. Are you happy about that? Sheffield killer spends first year of life sentence behind bars after robbing three children. Of That's not a story. Of course, he, but he, he, was, he got a life sentence. You don't need to update me every year. This is not a man who was sent to prison for a minimum of 35 years without parole for murder is still in prison after one year. Well, of course he fucking is. Is the guy he murdered still dead? How do I know unless you update me? Racist son Firmlin neighbour who smashed window with a brick is back in court. Guess who's back? I'm assuming he smashed the window that belonged to the flat or house of, uh, of someone he was, you know, he was racist towards. He's not just racist towards windows. You know, that, I'm assuming that. You know, that's, it's hard to tell, I don't know. If he's racist towards windows, that's really difficult. Because if you're racist towards something that is effectively see-through, then they could be anywhere. You know, people mock those who talk about defunding the police, but then you read headlines like this. Oregon Sheriff calls for urgent solution to rising crime. That's your fucking job, mate. Hello? Fucking... Have a day off, Trigger. 
Fife man accidentally launched funeral firework into mum's kitchen. Now, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to come clean to you. Because I know I said that the premise of this video was that I wasn't going to click on any articles. I was just going to do the headline. But then, I, but I read this and thought, fuck you, I'm clicking. And, it, and I don't believe for one second there isn't a single one of you watching this who isn't sat there saying the exact same thing. Because this is a headline that leaves more questions and, unanswered than it does answer any questions you didn't have previously in your head in the first place so i went for it and i'm hoping i won't fucking regret this a grieving fife man caused mayhem when he lit a firework in tribute to his late brother and accidentally launched it into his mum's kitchen the stray rocket whizzed into the room sending terrified family members running for cover joe arnott uh, Joe Arnott had wanted to send the firework into the night sky, obviously, as a final goodbye to his brother, Lewis, following his funeral earlier that day. The court heard the back... The court heard. The court heard that the back door, I'm assuming. Because unless the court was there in the, ki in the kitchen at the time. Or, you know, okay, anyway, let's ignore that. The court heard the back door to his mum, Catherine Anderson's house, was open as she had been smoking a cigarette in the kitchen at the time, as if to make this whole situation any more slightly fucking dangerous. Arnett's other brother, Ben, was also in the room. Police officers and firefighters attended to the property in Rosyth's Burnside, but it's fucking, it's burns and it's burnt now, Burnside Crescent, following a 999 call. Right? A fire service watch commander observed no active fire is that a job is it in the fire service right watch commander what you just turn up and go dave go and check make sure there is actually a fucking fire in there and make sure it's active is there an inactive fire could you have a fire that's just there just got its feet up to sleep on the fucking couch i don't the deputy fiscal continued and this guy is a tad melodramatic it sounds like colonel kurtz in fucking apocalypse now the smell of sulfur was hanging in the air and some of the tiles in the kitchen were scorch marks. The black tube from the firework was recovered. Was it though? Where was the black box? Did they recover everything? I want to know. I was a Navy SEAL. When, he added, when interviewed, the accused indicated that the stick of the firework had snapped prior to him setting it off. He didn't tell him that it was in his arsehole at the time. He indicated that he had set it off in his hand. Of course he had. You know, why not? Uh, he denied any intent to damage property or injure anyone. What? I mean, did, did anyone think that this wasn't an accident? Did they, did they think he was at his brother's funeral that evening going, tell you what, this is a bit fucking maudlin. Do you know what would liven things up a bit? Hold on, fucking hell. Do, do, hi, I'm, do, I'm Johnny, I'm Johnny Mook Knoxville. Welcome to fucking West Fife. Damn. <laughs> Defence lawyer Stephen Morrison said Arnott's brother had died towards the end of May 2020 due to a heart condition. <laughs> Did someone set a firework off in his house too? <laughs> this is, should not be funny, I'm sorry. Mr. Morrison said Arnott was in a highly emotional state at the time of the incident and that there was no intention to hurt anyone. Well, I fucking well hope not, too. Bloody hell. I tell you what, I'm so glad. I don't regret clicking on that fucking fair play. Well, I want to go to this. I want to go to every party that this family fucking has. I don't care what it is. Funeral, wedding, christening. Fucking, you know, wife swapping party. They, these motherfuckers know how to pass. And the best bit is, there was a security camera opposite their house filming in the garden, and there was a video of the firework going in. Check this out. So don't take the fucking piss. And that's where I was about to end this video, but as I was about to click off my news feeds, I saw this. And if you don't want to know the answer to that question, then you aren't bloody human. Now, obviously, I immediately thought, well, you know, that can't, that's got to be fake, right? But I did a little bit of digging, and I found the article. But it's, that could have been written by anyone. But then I found this. It's the actual fucking, it's a, it's a photograph of the actual 
article printed in a paper. And then I found this. And at that moment, I kind of realised, and I got it. I understood, because I wished I hadn't. I, I could have just not clicked on it, and I could have just gone on the rest of my life thinking, well, if I don't click on it and I don't know, then it, it can always be true. I could live in that world I want to live in. Because when whenever you click on stuff, it seems that it just separates us a bit more. It makes us a little bit more isolated. It seems to divide us a little bit more, make us a little bit more angry. And I get that. So I understand if you don't, always want to click on an article that on the surface looks like exactly what you want it to be. But that doesn't mean you have to share it on Facebook! Stop fucking contributing to the mental fucking you know, the degradation of this fucking planet! Just keep it to yourself! And I don't know why I'm getting angry. What's the point? Because if you're the kind of arsehole who can't read a fucking article that's two paragraphs long, you're not going to have sat here and watched a 35-minute YouTube video. But if you have watched it, then thank you. You probably know someone who does this and fucking pull them up next time. And other than that, like this video, post a comment, subscribe, and support me on Patreon. My name's Brother Neuro. I'm Dick Coughlin. Where there's no sense, there's no feeling. Good night, and may God... Be less.